In this painting, I'm going to demonstrate some more watercolor techniques. I drew the sketch using the pencil sketcher. This is the normal size, but I will have to paint at half size because of the video limitations. To start with, I'll do a light wash using the wash brush large. I'll pick burnt sienna for the pot and adjust the colors using the magic picker. I'll zoom in to show you what the wash brush large looks like. As you can see, it's a very wet brush. We're not concerned with accuracy at this point, so this is a good brush to use. I now do the remainder of the first wash. The next step is to smudge or add water, but not too much. Now I'll do the first detail wash using the wash brush medium. Again, there is no need to be too precise for this sort of painting. I carry on doing this on a new layer to give the traditional watercolour luminosity and transparency. Now for the second detail wash, on the new layer once again. So let's review what we have so far. First wash, next layer, first detail wash, next layer, second detail wash. Now let's see how it looks like with the sketch off. Well, it's beginning to look a bit like a painting. I'll now clean up the layers by putting the first three washes into a group and locking it so I don't paint over any of the layers by mistake. Now I'll put some more detail on a new layer. I'll pick the wet on dry thick and thin raggedy trunk brush to paint the rhododendron branches. I make the brush a bit smaller for the other bushes. I change to the WOD rigger for the thinner branches. I'll use the same brush, but with a different color for some more detail around the parts and so on. 
At this point I can do without the sketch. I'll pick the wash brush medium to build up the painting on a new layer, of course. I'll keep the brush quite small to start to put in some texture and local contrast. Now for the next steps, and a bit more behind the pot. I do the grass now using the DOD Fan Scattered Grasses brush. These scattered fan brushes are a bit like the nice traditional Fan Goff brushes. Now I'll use the DOD sponge brush for the top of the railway sleepers. And the gravel. picking some different colours and painting on a new layer for some more colour variation, leaving some white. I pick the smudge blender scattered to soften a bit. And do the same for the earth in the flower bed and pots. Let's review the layers. After having put the details layers into a group, I'll now use a little Photoshop trick. Duplicate the layers. I'll show them turned off to show the effect more clearly. When I turn the layers on, the effect is as though I had painted everything again, but on a different layer. By adjusting the duplicated layer opacity, I can reduce the effect to what I want. I zoom into normal size so we can see what the painting is now looking like. I now paint the rhododendron leaves using the WOD leaves foreground background variation brush. This brush, as the name suggests, varies colour from the background colour to the foreground colour. The rhododendron tends to have little clusters of leaves. Now I'll add some buds using the same brush, but with different colours. Of course I'm doing this on new layers. And finish with more leaves and buds. I 
I'll put all the layers into a new group which I'll call First Pass. And I'll use the Photoshop trick again to quickly get more tonal depth. Of course it would be better to paint than to use this trick as there will be more color variation and richness that way but it's a useful trick all the same. Now I'll duplicate the two groups and flatten them because I want to go back to a single paint layer. By duplicating the groups I'm keeping the old layers in case I want to go back to them. When we do something like this it's very important to check the layer mode and make sure it's set to multiply. Now I'll use another Photoshop trick to add color to the existing paint quickly by using the Smudge Flow Paint Soft Brush. Because the brush mode is set to luminosity the brush deepens the colors instead of smudging them. I'll use the smudge drippy water brush to add water to the paint. I do this at a very low opacity. I want to remove some of the texture. I will now add some highlights by using the scratch line brush action. This creates a new layer automatically so the scratching is non-destructive. Remove the underlying layer blending before painting. I want some more diffuse scratching so I'll add some scattering to the brush. Now I'll adjust the underlying layer blend mode. I have to move the panel out of the way so we can see what's happening. and review the effect by turning layer on and off. The parts have received little attention and look quite flat. So I'll add some depth to them on a new layer or other new layers of course. I'll use the wash glazing brush for this as it is a nice soft brush at low opacity, good for building up color on different layers. So I'll apply some paint and if necessary add some water by smudging before adding more paint on a new layer. I'll do the same with the other pots. Then add some shadows to the large part using the wash brush medium again. Some highlight on the part 
using the eraser scatter this time for a change, adjusting the brush opacity and size as required. The painting is lacking depth, so it's time to remove some paint using the same eraser scatter brush. And finally, more to demonstrate this feature than because I think the painting requires it, I'm going to paint over the painting using an opaque gouache layer. As you can see, the action creates a special opaque layer. I'll paint over using white. So I'm going to do a sort of a vignette. It's too much, so I'll reduce the layer opacity. Finally, I'll apply some edges using the medium edges action. Adjust the opacity. Zoom to full size to check. Out a bit and back to 50%. And this is as far as I'll go. Of course there is more that could be done. We could add some moss for example to the sleepers, remove some paint in places and so on. But I hope the techniques I've demonstrated here will be useful to you.